Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to talk about Summoner Showdown. All the good, all the bad, and all the ugly. And that is exactly the type of order that I'm going to go through pretty much everything here. So we are going to start with the good, but don't worry, we won't shy away from controversy and everything else that happened with it. So starting with the good things about it, well, I think the biggest thing about it is that I can definitely acknowledge the fact that this entire thing has a ton of potential. I am personally super excited to try it out for myself, provided the issues are addressed. And in general, I do like most of the things about this game mode. I do think that the drafting system is uh, fairly good. I don't think it's like perfect. I still not necessarily like the fact that there is as much RNG involved in it as we currently see but still those things considered the rng aspect of it is significantly smaller than it is i don't know in regular crystal opening and stuff like that because you are working with a pool of 30 champions which you have had the chance to draft which obviously on live ser servers should likely be a reflection of your own accounts and uh, i look forward to it i look forward to it definitely i look forward to it having an impact on meta <clears throat> with uh, some champions being you know, more usable for this game mode than anywhere else, similar as it was for incursions that are the Morning Stars or the One of the Ducks and whoever else that are so sort of incursions amazing tier, but are hardly used anywhere else in the game. And similar things should happen uh, by looking at the nodes that we see currently. The Visions were MVP, Punisher 2099 was really valuable, some other champions, but that will be and is decided also largely by the nodes having the ability to counter as many champions as possible and having the good defensive lineup is obviously important but the nodes also play a very important part in this and moving away from the good part from the excitement of this entire thing which i have successfully covered pretty much we need to start looking at the ugly Part. So we covered the good very briefly because overall I do think even though I didn't talk about it in length that is a major massive thing for this game. I cannot wait for it. I hope it gets implemented quickly and it looks like it could have very promising applications in MCOC and effect on the players and enter their enthusiasm for the game. But let's talk about the bad. And the bad is that the entire experience, even watching it, was extremely frustrating. I can imagine how annoyed and angry semi-finalists really were whilst they were forced to put up that fake smile. Because in private, pretty much all of them had more than their fair share of feedback about the nodes, about the setup of the format. So let's go over it. First of all, I think the nodes were shit. I think the node selection was quite shit. I think you can have the more aggressive AI. I think uh, you can have your super masochisms and stuff like that. But there was a critical oversight that completely annihilated the watching and probably playing experience for that tournament, which was either Spite or Rich Get Richer with the unblockable specials and this current AI. There could have been a very, very easy common sense solution just by adding extra aggressive node on the opponents uh, making sure that the opponents are more likely to throw their special attacks they could have added the aggressive node or enhanced special one and enhanced special twos because the specials are unblockable anyways just to make it so that they are more likely to throw them or something they could have made it less of a special three fiesta because the amount of special threes in this entire tournament uh rivaled the amount of fights i think in the, the second semi-finals we actually had 20 plus special threes to the face in like 16 or 17 fights and many of the fights were basically non-existent if ai so decided to turtle up in the corner wait till they get level three then then you were dead and there was nothing you could do about it and that is the last thing that you'd consider as a measure of skill i think either shying away from spite and rich get richer these passive power gain nodes where you effectively die over time or adding aggressive nodes would have been a very simple solution for these problems but not none of it was done which makes me believe that 
this game mode wasn't playtested properly makes me think that something this easy, this obvious, this problematic should not have been a very difficult thing to catch in design. But I guess it was. So with all that in mind, that is definitely the badge. The nodes 100% have to change before this game mode goes to the live servers and people can work with it. And maybe more importantly, rather than the nodes themselves, the idea behind these fights need to change. And somebody needs to have a bit more critical thinking whilst designing these fights. Now, I'm not trying to say that, you know, we need easier nodes or anything like that. No, make the nodes hard, do what you want, but make it an accurate test of skill and knowledge opposed to pray to God, opponent throws a special attack. That definitely was incredibly ugly and uh, it has to be addressed without a doubt. Keeping on the ugly train, I think nobody can <clears throat> defend the idea of die faster win. And there is also a very, very simple solution here. And I cannot understand why it is so difficult for these common sense things to be addressed. Now, I'm not a game developer. <clears throat> I haven't spent hours trying to figure out the fairest way how to measure and score these fights. Some people say that, you know, the fight duration time should be in worse. The longer you fight, the more points you should get. And I think that's wrong too. Now, I have literally spent five minutes max thinking about how they should score the fights. And I do believe that Defender HP is the best and the biggest scoring factor. But I also believe that unless both people KO their opponent, there does not need to be additional scoring system. It's as simple as you have Defender HP removed. And then if both players solo their fights, then you add in a tiebreaker, which can be either attacker health remaining, or it can be either how, I don't know, time remaining in a fight. It can be either or pick whichever one you want. Let us know. I would personally like uh, time remaining in a fight, maybe attack, I don't know, whichever. Again, both have upsides, both have downsides, but there is no need for three scoring parameters if the first one is meant to decide the fight and the rest of them are just tiebreakers, then make sure that none of the bottom two points count in any other circumstance than when both players solo their fights. Other than that, winners decided solely by HP removed. Done. All of these problems are sorted. How hard is that? None of this die faster bullshit. If both players get KO'd in, I don't know, one gets KO'd in 10 seconds, one gets KO'd in 15 seconds, it doesn't matter. What matters is who took more HP of their opponent as if it ought to matter, like you'd think as if it should matter in any kind of like logical setup. So that definitely was ugly. I'd like to see this amended and I cannot see probably a better way than just to have the defender HP remaining. And then the tiebreaker comes in if you both KO the opponents. Very simple, no need to overcomplicate it. And in this way, everybody knows exactly what they have to do. And the secondary criteria that's important to them to keep it back of their mind. Simple. Right. Right. Now that we have discussed that, we need to address all the controversy because there is a little bit of a Twitter war going on as well, where obviously CCP gets dropped in. But there are plenty of opinions like Kabam acknowledged the errors later. Kabam rewarded the player's compensation package. He deemed amazing. Kabam acknowledged what the issue was with the server issues. Acknowledged this was a bait of the game mode. And, you know, as if Kabam was perfect. Here's the thing. They didn't really do that. First of all, to explain all the problem, there was the ugly controversy part of this. The bug situation with Vermin's fight. For those of you who have not seen it, basically, opponents have unblockable special attacks. Miles is always meant to be able to face them, but he wasn't. He got wrecked in the one fight that he got used, which was a bug. And after this aired, 
Bam posted this, that they only caught it after the series were ended. They don't think it would have ended the outcome. And that's about it. They apologize to Werner. However, that is not entirely true. Because Werner made the post about it, very good post. And he also said that he would like to talk about it with somebody on their platform uh, about basically everything that happened. And I am more than happy to accommodate that request. If Werner by any chance is watching this video, then by all means, feel free to reach out to me. My line ID is in the video description. We can arrange either a live stream or an interview type video where we can go over in more detail about everything what you think. Now, I'm not going to read all the posts. I'm sure you guys are familiar with it. If you're not, then I will leave a link to it in the video description. But the base idea is, so first of all, he, you know, is grateful for the tournament in the first place because they didn't have to do it. He liked the tournament and the idea. He defends Kabam that they're not out to get us, but then he goes to the ugly things as well. And the, one of the bigger problems for him especially, is that there is no mention of the bug whatsoever in the official live stream that was posted in the video. And keep in mind, it was not live. All of these things happened over a month ago, and they had one month to edit those videos. So they made a conscious decision to cut out all the interview pieces that were addressing the bug, because the interview was longer, and they cut out multiple pieces of it, and all the mention of Miles Morales bug was cut out. Additionally, people commenting on it, and this is not a dig at them, I assume or I think it probably either got cut out as well, or they were basically told not to discuss it. But there was no mention of the bug as it was happening, or after the event was over. And in the video in general, there was no mention of it. So anybody who watched the video, unless they know for a fact it was bug, they have no indication of that, which has to be changed. Because, well, that is one of his biggest grievances here as well, that because they did that, for an average player watching that video, he can very easily come across, well, as a knob who doesn't know what he's doing. And that is extremely demoralizing. Second of all, the difference in between private and personal conversations here is to note as well, because in private, they did acknowledge that it was a bug, they apologized to him, and they did acknowledge the impact of it. However, in public, we saw this response, which is a lie. It is a lie. And I am not saying that Kabam Mike is the one that's pressing it. I'm probably going to say that somebody told him to say this or somebody basically told him to post this i'm not trying to have a go at kabam Mi mike mike specifically or anybody but this is inaccurate they did not they did catch it earlier not until the series is over also also they say that they do not believe that it would have changed the outcome which it clearly does it clearly did because in these tournaments especially if you watched it you will notice that a lot depends on your mental state and nerves. A lot of your success in high pressure situations definitely is on your mental state and nerves. And things like this absolutely damages you. The rage, the anger, the frustration, that definitely comes into play and decides how well you do further on. Not to mention the fact that your faith has been shattered into this interaction. He had a chance and he did pick Miles for one fight later on, but he never ended up using him, even though it could have been a very solid option because he simply did not know whether it will work. The lack of that knowledge also impacts the outcome of the match. So in more ways than one, a situation like this does determine the outcome. So this is a lie. 100%. And that's just not right. That's, that's basically gaslighting people. Because they have no mention of it on the official stream, on the official video. They do make a forum post that's, at the very least, not entirely truthful. 
uh, and it's just not right. It's not right. It, it's ugly. It's very, very ugly. So there we are. We had a tournament with an amazing ambitions, with a great setup that was unfortunately marred with shitty node combinations, which made it much bigger RNG Fiesta than it ought to have been, with a shitty scoring system, which rewarded people who got KO'd quicker, and obviously bugs that significantly altered the outcome and got brushed off completely publicly. I think that's, I'm not entirely sure what the definition of gaslighting is, but that is pretty much what I imagine it to be to a T. So here we are. I'm going to borrow a few words from British old school top gear here. And I'm just going to go with kabam, as always. Ambitious, but rubbish. If you think that this is the peak of this game, this is meant to represent the most competitive conditions with hard fights, clever picks that should reward you with, you know, for your intelligence, it should reward you for your fighting skill. This tournament did not accomplish that well enough. And I'm not trying to say that the people who qualify were not great players. 100% they were. 100%. However, the semifinals and the finals, I do not feel were necessarily an accurate measurement of true MCOC promise in between the nine people that qualified at all. So much was dependent on RNG, so much was dependent on shitty AI, so much was dependent on crappy scoring system, and so much got, I don't know, ruined by that stupid bug as well. And all in respect to Happy McMuffins, you know, I am not disputing at all his playing ability. 100%. He won it according to the rules, played well, you know, and Props to him. I am, however, uh, issuing my condolences to other semi-finalists who might have gotten screwed by it. And I don't think that Verim was the only one who got affected by imperfections in all of this. And on top of that, there is still quite a lot of work to be done. And we need more from Kabam. Because this issue, obviously, has been discussed over the course of several past days. But Kabam hasn't had a really response to give either. Not besides this less than full disclosure post. So with that, again, it's important to acknowledge the good things. The game mode looks promising, looks good, looks exciting. I want to play. I think it can be the type of thing that we need in MCOC. There are obvious questions about the rewards and everything else because incursions looked promising, looked exciting, were completely butchered by the rewards and the amount of RNG in it. Let's hope it's not the case here. At the same time, it's just a shame that that is how it goes down. It's a shame that, and again, this is not a dig at Kabam Mike, Dave, or John, or whoever else, but it is a shame that those are the people organizing this thing and doing as poor of a job as it was done. Because I don't think many people with a serious face can sit down and say that Sumner showdown went smooth, that they're happy with the scoring system, that they're happy with the way Kabam addressed Miles bug, and so on. And that they're happy with the eating special three to the face fights. It's a shame that something this awesome got picked apart bit by bit by the AI, by the nodes, by the bugs, by everything else. Disappointed. 
just disappointing as fuck. Right. That's what I think about the entire summoner showdown and solo competitive game mode. Let me know what you guys think, and I'm gonna catch you guys soon. See ya. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information 